What is the difference between office automation and business process automation? Hi, my name is Andreas Hense and I make videos on business process automation. Today I'll talk about office automation. The term office automation has already been around in 1980 and I've recently found an article by Dennis Zechritzis and um, F.H. Lochowski. Um, I'll put a link in the description below, which is quite interesting. And there are some very interesting things in this article and I'll come back to that by the end um, of this video. So, office automation and business process automation. Today, um, I will talk about the following topics. First, um, the situation in the 1980s in office automation. And then I will talk about the relationship between the two terms, office automation and business process automation. Then I'll briefly sketch the situation in office automation that we have today. And at the end, I will tell you about some prophecies from this article. So let's get started. So what was the situation in office automation in the 1980s. Um, there is one quote from this article um, and it says that office automation and office information systems are in their infancy. And um, at that time, um, the situation was, was such that uh, computers were still quite expensive. We were, we were coming from the mainframe computers that costs millions of euros or millions of dollars. And microprocessors became more and more affordable. And the prices, I still remember for the personal computers, the PCs, they were more than 10,000 marks at the time, or which is equivalent to $10,000 or 10,000 euros today. And um, that was something that you just couldn't afford, at least not as a student uh, at that time. And, but prices were falling and then there were Atari computers coming out, which cost maybe three or 4,000 marks and so on and so forth. So this technology was coming to a, to a range where everybody could afford it. And the idea, and this is something also the article talks about, was to use computers more and more in the office. The first thing that comes to mind um, at that time uh, when using computers in the office was text processing, of course. Text processing um, was usually done uh, on typewriters at the time. Of course, um, we had electric typewriters and then typewriters with a small memory that could memorize one line. But then when you had a computer, you could type your whole text and then print it out in the end. And that was much better and you could work much quicker than with uh, typewriters. And so this was one of the first uh, things that were possible. Multimedia um, was still something um, for uh, research, more or less. And uh, in practice, you couldn't really store multimedia files on computer systems at that time. For example, I remember that um, the hard disk drive that you could buy for the Atari at that time had 20 megabytes of storage, which, which was huge compared to the floppy disks. But imagine just one high resolution photograph of nowadays um, cameras would fill up the whole space on that hard disk. So you couldn't really store large quantities of multimedia. So text processing was the only thing. Um, another thing was, um, uh, of course, uh, the possibility to collaborate uh, with computers at that time and also the possibility to automate business processes. And this is also something this article talks about. Um, that was still also um, in their infancy. So, so there were ideas um, to, to use Petri nets for modeling business processes, uh, but all the technology for putting things together and connecting PCs um, was still in their infancy. So everything was heterogeneous and everyone had different operating systems. And um, so it was really not easy to, uh, to collaborate. Of course, there was already um, the internet at that time and you could uh, send emails, for example, but also the access to email was still restricted to um, maybe military um, persons and some persons in academia, but this was still not something that you could find in ordinary offices. So many things were still missing and most of the processes, the business processes 
at that time um, were still happening with paper and um, everything was still more or less paper-based and some of the systems, of course, larger systems were emerging, but you couldn't really talk about um, a, a lot of office automation at that time. So let's talk about um, let's talk about the two um, terminologies. Um, I think about it that way. If we have a big circle and we say that office automation um, is, um, is, is the whole topic, um, then we, we can uh, divide this, um, this topic into two areas. One is uh, uh, office automation by standard software and the other one is office automation by individual software. And if we look at the standard software part, we can divide that again um, into office software on the desktop, which is uh, used by one user typically. And the other part is um, office uh, software on a server where several people are working together with a central database more or less. And in the first category, uh, the office software on the desktop, we have of course um, word processing, uh, spreadsheets, um, slides, etc. Something um, that's done uh, very often now with Microsoft Office, for example. So this name fits very well. And in the second part, um, we have the standard software systems like um, ERP systems, enterprise resource planning, uh, CRM systems, customer, uh, customer relationship management, and so on and so forth. In the second category, um, we have individual software and in the individual software, we have one part uh, which is uh, business process management systems and there we have business process automation and also our workflow management systems. They are individuals, uh, in individual systems and then we have other software for the same uh, purpose for office automation and maybe also some compartment for robotic process automation and technologies that go into, into that direction. Summing up, we can say that uh, business process automation is a part of office automation. So let's talk about the situation in office automation um, today. Um, I mean, if we compare this uh, to the 1980s, uh, office automation and office information systems are now grown up. They are more than 40 years old and um, many of the problems have been solved um, of the past. So now we have less and less paper in the offices. Um, after the, uh, the pandemic, the, the COVID pandemic, um, uh, we had more and more processes where it was enough to, to send a copy of the file, you know, sign it by hand and, and scan it and, and, and send a PDF. That, that's now accepted in, in many places. So paper is reduced more and more. In addition, um, everyone has now one or more desktop uh, computers um, in their office and uh, one or more mobile devices, so the equipment with, uh, with hardware is very good today, I would say. And um, uh, the only problem that's always still there, that's still a challenge, is the integration of the whole thing. And since business processes are always evolving, it's very hard to, to keep track of that. Um, but uh, I think there's still some, some room there to, to automate uh, processes even further and to integrate the automation and technologies like robotic process automation, for example, can help here. And the use of artificial intelligence may also give us another push um, into that direction. And um, so um, we can say that really office automation is something that exists today and is quite mature after all. Yet to conclude this video, I want to cite something from this article, um, as I have promised. And um, the article says that the need for formal offices as we know them today may disappear when everyone has their own personal computer. There have always been prophecies of the office in the home. What will be the social implications of the demise of the formal office where many friendships and social contacts are made? So I think that's a very good statement if you think that this is 40 years, more than 40 years ago and pretty much describes the situation we have today. Thank you for watching.